what is up you guys of course always welcome back to another of course video from yours truly chris the scarander now before going into this video if you like this type of content make sure to leave of course a like and of course subscribe and probably more importantly there are gonna be spoilers in this video as uh, so we're gonna include a pokedex that has been leaked for a few weeks back about the crown of thundra which was leaked through pokemon home as they were including pokedex entries with the isle of armor pretty much securing which 100 extra pokemon got a few extra notes in their pokedex which unfortunately meant that we're very selective which Pokemon that are in the next upcoming game. That said, um, it made me think a little bit about Pokemon that are absolutely missing and what roles they define in previous generation, which made them so effective as there are certain play styles that are not thriving. And uh, with these Pokemon not included, they're probably gonna keep on thriving as they have a very, very niche roles, but they push back a certain matchup that right now are really good. So without further ado, these are the top five niches and Pokemon yet to be fulfilled in the Pokemon Sword and Shields and Generation 8's Pokedex. So with that said, let's hit it off with the number five spot. At number five, we have Alolan Muck. And for good reasons, Alolan Muck is representing something that neither Drapion or Skank Tank is able to replicate. They are pushing back sunken types and fairies at the same time that it has reliable recovery. While Muck is not necessarily one of my personal period Pokemon, I hate dealing with it because of the Recycle set and the Curse set and a Soul Vest set. And while Pursuit is out, it basically means that Tyranitar was obsolete as it comes to offensive pressuring, especially offensive sunken types. It basically meant that Mandibus is not filling a role that it does while doing well thanks to heavy duty boots. It is not the apex wall breaker that um, fortunately Alolan Muck has been. And since it isn't replicated in one other Pokemon whatsoever this generation, it will mean that both Ghost and Psychic Time will be as effective as they ever was. We can only hope that um, the new Moltres form will do something with this, but even with that in mind, the reason Manabyze isn't effective is because it has a plethora of extra weaknesses to watch out for and be wary about. This is something Alolan Muck doesn't have, it's a soul ground type weakness, which is very easy to patch. So not having Alolan Muck this generation is absolutely a devastating blow for the whole matchup and whole meta in itself. So uh, at the number four spot, this is something I think is very, very particular, but it is basically a role that is in the game, but aren't as well diverse as a Pokemon for Generation 7 was. And it is the wall breaking phaser. We have the defined best phaser in the game, and that is actually Skarmory, but it has a matchup it can't beat, and it boils down to fire and electric type that could set up. And most of them can this generation thanks to Nasty Plot and thanks to broad remove pulls. Look at about Tabu Koko this generation, which will get something like close combat and play rough. It is by default a lot more stronger than the ever was before and can go special and physical a pokemon that did deal with this rather well even though it wasn't in the game but it would have been able to pull them off was actually mega agron a ridiculous high split defense stats together with that ability and filter and losing that rock type becoming pure steel made mega agron one of the most annoying both wall breaker as a whole but also phaser because it's a very very physical uh, phaser that could actually punish switches basically did you dare to actually set up and um, hope to beat it or did you attack it hope to survive it because it could face you or it could hit you really hard um not having stuff like mega iron this game is absolutely devastating there are no pokemon like that and while i've seen people talking about particularly steelix has filled this role it's still not only too slow it also has has a lot more weaknesses to kind of compensate for agron could stay in against most things efficiently and force switches naturally and if you force switches to get it with faces you get that much more seal damage from your hazards uh, so having something not like aggro in this game is mind-boggling for me as it's something i think is truly important and not getting it is at very best unfortunate at number three we have the speedy rock type now i wanted to first talk about just mega daienshi as a whole but i realized there's one other pokemon that we are really not being able to kind of compensate for because we're gonna get one speed rock type but it's not as efficient as it was before aerodactyl comes back water for the base speed which is wonderful it's gonna be the speediest rock type there is but 
Megaradactyl was that much faster, and the fastest rock type right now is actually a midday form of Lycan Rocket 112. Basically, not being speedy is a very, very common thing for rock type, but a more specially orientated Pokemon such as Dianchi, there is nothing like that. That the fastest we got that actually able to set up offensive pressure are Luna Rock or Luna Tune, I mean, and that is awful. There really, really, really does mean that there are the matchup here in flying types and bug types that can pivot against these things naturally, not be punished. The lack of pursuit is fine, but you want to threaten these matchup and since U-turn are so common in both rock and flying they're able to thrive in this generation's kind of matchups because the mana will allow it with heavy duty boots in contrast to something like a rock time neighborhood able to have speed and there are very very few punish plays versus flying and bug types versus a rock type that is supposed to kind of deal with them efficiently it comes down to basically the day they are forced to stay in and will they beat you when they stay in and that's not a particularly great thing to kind of have. It does mean, for example, that against Volcarona, for example, is probably the best example of Pokemon that absolutely are thriving for all the wrong reasons. The, the Pokemon that are able to beat it one versus one is now theoretically always slower, so it always will have a free setup and potentially survive. I don't know how this kind of happened, but it just basically means that we need rock types that are speedy and it looks like it won't happen in this generation. We are born with using regular Aerodactyl and potentially Terraction, I guess, as our primary speed of rock types. And while Aerodactyl is fast, it is very, very alone in the Apex Elite speeds here. I mean, only have two Pokemon above 110 base speed. That's bad. That's that's a very, very tough situation and a cookie to sell. So, I don't know. It, it, it rubs me the wrong way. There were Pokemon that are absolutely also filling this role. And like I said, Mega Dianchi is probably closest to home for me as a Pokemon that aren't replicated at all this generation, which did a lot of things right. If anything, forced a few matchups to never really set up freely. Now they're able to, and that's, well, that's unfortunate. At the number two spot, we have Dauphan, or primarily actually the anti suicide lead. John Fan it represents a lot of arrays of niches. It's probably more in bond with Draft League, but it did fill the same type of role in the Smogun meta. Due to having natural sturdy combination with both Earthquake and Ice Shards, a priority move together with Self Rock and Spinning, there were a lot of things this Pokemon could do depending on what you needed. It is one of those glue Pokemon that does a lot of things right, but for me, it is absolutely the anti lead variant that is able to punish potential suicide lead with an actual priority. Like looking at the likes, for example, of Excel Goal, which could easily be outmanaged and only get one layer of spikes up and have a risk of getting a rapid spin as a KO because of the sturdy. There is just no Pokemon like Dolphin, and while it doesn't represent the best of the ground types, the thing it does is so unique and fills a lot of niches. But for me, it's just a personal preference of a Pokemon I want to use naturally because. It allows certain matchups to really be wary about what they'll lead off with. Dolphin has a big effect on how the startup looks like, and not to my Pokemon like that, it's just so boring. Another thing that really made this Pokemon a lot better this generation was that it got both Body Press and Power Whip. We know this through Pokemon Home, and it would allow it actually to do a more defensive role more efficiently as the combination of Power Whip and Earthquake is something that only Torterra has been able to kind of pressure Pokemon with and combine that with a Priority Ice Shard and potentially even Rock Polish. It is potentially one of the greatest ground type sweepers we got and we don't get to use it and it is so frustrating. I love Darfan and not getting the generation to actually be dealing with the cup barrage and see the best elephants duke it out. Yeah, you bet your shit I'm disappointed. For me, Darfan is a personal favorite and uh, it's probably why it's so hard this list as I really want to use this generation. It feels, like I said, so many roles. It does glue teams so naturally and now we're born to have these defiant Pokemon over a suicide anti-lead, which is just unreplicated. And at our last spot, I mean, this is this is something that has been talked about. People are missing this. I hate this Pokemon a lot. Glisco. I mean, the stall breaker, the physical stall breaker that is speedy. There is nothing like this. Like, 
the only stallbreakers I know about are not aren't able to recover properly against all these matchups that Rhino Thriven in this generation. Uh, but first coming to mind is Jellicent. Um is probably the only like stallbreaker I know that could do this sufficiently. But Gliscor was on a whole other level. The toxic healing was just the best, or poison heal, I guess it's called, to get it with toxic orb, meant that it couldn't get stalled out, it couldn't get toxic stalled out, as properly said. And consider how the game looks right now. Taunt, what does it do? Well, it makes sure that toxic packs will never work, it makes sure Corviknight will never work. These are the two glue Pokemon of this generation, and we have Clefable, which also can't necessarily beat this Pokemon thanks to Taunt. It will always run special defensive because its natural defense is so high in a way to get a real high HP and roost and protect Toxic Earthquake. It can only run Earthquake, it will mostly be just fine. As let's say now, Corviknight, which is primarily maybe the most, I was gonna say switch in that could potentially wall it out think about this every set of Corviknight is beaten by taunts because let's say the iron defense set with a brave bird and body press uh, which usually run iron defense and roost taunt that and you know you run those moves out and it's done it can't do anything the more defensive variant with defog only has u-turn and i believe iron head or brave bird so it's dealt with naturally too the bulk variant will always be slower it will has power whip and brave bird yeah th there is no way going around it Toxic Pack can't beat it because of the <laughs> taunting and ah it's so frustrating because it's just it's a defined playstyle. Gliscor is not it's not a Pokemon, it's a playstyle. It is the speedy stall breaker that isn't in the game, which will allow every stall Pokemon to thrive. Because the only Pokemon being able to replicate this, which we actually got this generation, or we have it this generation is Hydreigon. The reason Hydreigon, however, fails is because it's weak to Body Press versus Corviknight and it's weak to Fable as a whole, so we will allow them to work anyway. And of course, it is not resilient to Toxic. It will be stalled out. And But that's our closest thing, and it's nowhere near as efficient as Gliscor is. So not having Gliscor this generation is an absolute blow, and... Uh, <laughs> I'm feeling a bit down by that because there are so many good defensive Pokemon. I mean, all the Apex defensive Pokemon this generation are in this game from previous generations to this one. They're all here. So, not having something to break them is blows my mind. It is such a good thing to have. Stallbreaker, where are you? We need you. So, that's my list. I really hope you guys enjoy this and are, of course, hopefully agreeing with me and with that said i really want to know what you guys are thinking what roles are you missing here or niches that are just in this game um a f small shout out is actually for alligator i really miss that guy not having a this generation as a sheer force dragon dancer it be leaves Jaros very very alone and it's not as efficient as for alligator i'm sorry but without dynamaxing and without c moves for alligator is way better so of course i miss him too uh, so that's it. That's all, guys. Thank you, of course, for watching. And if you enjoyed this episode, make sure to tell me if I'm gonna make more of these top fives. And with that said, as always, have a great day, everyone.